tonight we're very uh, honored to be with us a uh, renowned monk in the tradition of bhakti yoga. So he travels all over the world to tweak um, this ancient science of bhakti. Um, so let's hear from him. We're very lucky, very fortunate today. Feel free. Uh, you can stay with us until 8 more or less. Feel free to ask questions. And, uh, Big round of applause for Namaskar. say is the crown of yoga and why is it so well if we look at the yoga sutras of Patanjali right where yoga is really sort of outlined then we understand that there are eight aspects to yoga it's known as Astanga yoga the eight limbs of yoga and they include various things such as and the asanas is, is one of them, right? Sitting in various postures and folding your legs and all that's part of yoga. Um, pranayama is part of that, controlling the breath. Jhan, meditation is also part of that, of that. Now if we read Patanjali a bit more, then we read that the purpose of all these things is to control the mind which is the seat of the senses. The senses give us so many impulses, obviously. Smell. Mm. Good. Mm. Oh, it's horrible. Uh, accepting, rejecting. Whatever comes in through the senses, accepting, rejecting, accepting, rejecting, all day. Mm. Okay? And then, uh, and of course, some people they cannot control that. They are just, uh, whatever comes to the senses, they run after it. Uh, so, yoga is first of all giving us self-control and control of the mind. And Patanjali emphasizes that as the real purpose. Of course, we don't always use it for that. We use it also for physical fitness and for straightening our spine, which is all curved from sitting too much behind the computer or, or all these things, right? Or, you know, to get your hands straight after typing forever on a phone. I mean, if you think about it, if you would if to do this exercise for a long time, and I'd pay you for it, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> but on the phone, no problem. We can just write a whole book on the phone and we can do it. And then your hands are forever like this. Anyway, so yoga in this way gives us self-discipline, basically, to translate it into modern language. Okay? Now, if you have control over yourself, that means you can make conscious choices in your life. You're not just controlled by everything around you, but you start making conscious choices in your life about where you want to go. Then, after you've reached that, then the next stage where you come is bhakti. And what is bhakti? Bhakti is, is the path of devotion. Now devotion is something 
that is nice, it involves the heart. Right? And when you do something with devotion, now you're going to really give it your best. Right? You're going to make something very, very nice when you do it with devotion. Uh, so once the mind is controlled, then naturally we should be doing things with devotion. That's the exalted state of the mind. Yeah. In our exalted state, we do things with devotion. Well, who's cooking tonight? Me. What is it? Uh, well, I bought this from the supermarket and you just put it in the microwave and in, in seven minutes it's hot. Everyone go, are you hungry? Eh, it's okay, I'll eat later. Yeah? I mean, or what are you, uh, oh, you're cooking tonight. What, what, you, what, what is it? Oh, I spent, uh, I spent six hours in the kitchen today and I made all these amazing things here. Oh, are you hungry? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Bring it in. Yeah. Naturally, devotion attracts. If we see a beautiful, some, some beauty, something, something made very nicely, beautiful painting, and we see the devotion in this painting, so that look how much, how much energy the painter put into this. Wow, we, now I want to see it. If I see something slapped together, you know, like, eh, then uh, that doesn't touch me. But when I see devotion, that touches. Devotion speaks to us, speaks to the heart. It is what attracts. Devotion is, is an expression of love. And as I said, devotion is the exalted feature of our of our nature of our being when we do things with devotion then we are producing wonderful results imagine we would do everything with devotion you know imagine what kind of personality would that be someone who does everything with devotion amazing personality now there's only one thing where is it directed uh, if i'm working with a lot of devotion in a uh, in a concentration camp then that kind of devotion is destructive it's it's directed to its destruction that <coughs> devotion is not positive at all that devotion therefore the devotion must also be properly directed it must be directed and imagine that devotion directed to the well-being of all. How about that? Where my happiness is not just my happiness alone, but includes the happiness of everyone else. <coughs> that's my happiness. Well, that's, uh, now it gets pretty exalted, pretty high. So that's bhakti. There, that's really bhakti. <coughs> that spirit of devotion. And of course, when you, you are looking at the welfare of all, then uh, spirituality comes in the picture, divinity comes in the picture, uh, because only through that means can you uh, really have that spirit of welfare for all. Otherwise, we're going to develop sectarian consciousness, you know, like I and mine. This is my child, you know. Ah, kuchi, kuchi, kuchi. Hey, 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 hey. hey son of a gun. And, uh, oh, and that's a horrible kid with the names. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sectarian. Yeah. Love for our own child, but not for the names. Why? Why? What makes this child yours? Just, just some uh, genetic connection or something like that? You know? Okay. Grew in, grew in your belly. That now it's your child. Very nice. And the other kids didn't, so therefore they can go to hell. <laughs> That's not a good consciousness. Right? Well, we should have all of them. In a way, Vasudeva Katumbatam. We are one big family. Huh? One big family. That is 
actually bhakti. That is devotion. So this knowledge of bhakti is the crown of yoga. After we have done the asana, the meditation, the controlled breathing, and all these things, and our consciousness become peaceful and controlled, then the next step is, let's go towards bhakti. So that is what I'm supposed to introduce here tonight, bhakti yoga. And with this, I have given it a shot. And uh, well, now is your turn. You can ask questions, you can object, you can do anything, but don't throw things, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't get physical. Verbally, I don't care. You can say anything you want, but <clears throat> let's... Uh, because open, to be open and honest is important. And to actually speak freely is, is helpful. Huh? As they say, the truth sets you free. Uh, so in, in the light of that, uh, I'll be quiet now. I'll do some mona vrata. Mona Vrata means mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'll do Mona Vrata I'll only mm -mm -mm, uh, until someone asks a question mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> mm. How is it uh, possible to feel the same love for everybody without being tired you know, without like, your energy running how is it possible to feel the same love for everybody without getting tired, without your energy running out? Um, well, that is a, is a very relevant question and that question is a bit my life. Because <coughs> you're going really to the root of what I'm trying to live. <laughs> uh, you, you put your finger right on, on the... On the do I look tired? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. But I try to, uh, I try to to live what I say. <coughs> and uh, in on the one hand, it is tiring. But then on the other hand, you know, it's always being there for other people, always trying to give myself for other people. But at the same time, uh, it is also. <coughs> It also gives a lot of energy. So it takes energy, but you get a lot back. You get a lot back. And that actually nourishes you to a point where you rise above your limitations. And then when you become very great, which I'm not, but then you can, uh, can do that, you know, where you can just, just be positive to all and, and, and actually loving and kind. Um, at present, it, it's maybe, for most of us, it's an idea, an idea, a noble idea, something to strive for, and we're working work in progress, hopefully, um, not work in stagnation, so um, I think uh, that gives a lot of energy. Yeah. And then... Uh, <coughs> yeah, when, when you give like that, you'll never grow old. Your life never comes to, to a point where it's behind you. See, in the tarot, I don't know if you are interested in tarot cards, but you might be. In tarot cards, there is one card which shows the young man looking forward and the old man looking backward. And it's an interesting card. Uh, because generally that's how it's looked upon. Young people look forward, old people look backward. They look back and they live with their memories. And now nothing going on. Children come once in six months to visit. You know, and They've just been one month and 14 days ago. So it's a 
few more months until they will be coming again. <laughs> It's, no, but when you're giving in all directions, you know, you're alive. Uh, so bhakti brings us life, it makes us alive. So uh, sometimes a little tired. <coughs> then you sleep. <laughs> and then after a good sleep, then you go again. Thank you. Also. Yes. Uh, What's your name before you say? Danny. Can you say it loud? Danny. 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 Welcome. <coughs> um, I'm. I was here uh, first of all because of meditation, and uh, what I learned is that I don't understand what nothing about meditation. I mean. Uh, Always when I try to meditate, when I do some meditation, I feel sad and it sometimes makes me cry and I don't know why, I, I don't know if that is good or bad, I don't know if after that, after I usually feel lost. Um. As you say, as you rightly say, what is meditation? I mean, that is an um, interesting question. Um, everybody has, has heard, read, tried something called meditation. A lot of the meditation that we have learned is you sit still and you try to empty the mind. That's an often, often a technique you hear. And it's not easy. Yeah. Breathe in. <coughs> Breathe out. Think of nothing. But if I think of nothing, I might just go nothing, 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 and that's also then I'm thinking of the word nothing. Or it's not or my mind will go to the moon. My mind can go very quickly to many places. Japan, Tokyo, so many people. <laughs> oh yes, everything, <laughs> everything, <laughs> little plastic and very small. Everything, very small. People sleep in drawers. <laughs> Tokyo. So, okay. Uh, you can just go so quickly. Brazil. They go like carnival. It's like a good life and or a boat on the Amazon and uh, piranhas in the water. It's exciting. Don't don't try and stick a stick a toe in the water because you might not come back with a toe. All right. Uh, so how to meditate? Make the mind empty, is that it? Sit still, connect with our feelings, is that meditation? What is meditation? Sitting there and trying to sort of be more aware of what is inside. That is maybe meditation for some. But that is incomplete. So when you are meditating, you say you're experiencing some feelings of sadness. So it sounds like you're connecting with feelings inside that usually you don't have time for and is doing many things. But when you sit still, you're connecting with these feelings. And then you, and apparently you're not fulfilled. 
because there's sadness. Sadness comes when we are not fulfilled. Yeah? So <coughs> there's an extent of lack of fulfillment in life. So in this way your meditation about connecting with your feelings is, is bringing that up. But that is not complete, that is just the beginning where we take the first steps of connecting with the mind. The mind is thinking, feeling, and willing. Yeah? That's what the mind's doing. Thinking, feeling, willing, and connecting. Now, we can also direct the mind. Yeah? Not only just sit there, we can meditate on something. Sometimes with guided meditation, you know. For example, everyone close your eyes and think of your favorite place in the forest. Are you there? You're walking towards your favorite place in the forest and you sit down. You feel well. And so on. And it can go on like this for one hour and it'll take you to a whole forest experience. And, you know. Uh, and you can t you can yourself decide what's in your forest. And through your forest you go into the mind. So it's a meditation where we are going into the mind. So when we are beginners in meditation, we begin to make a connection with the mind. Usually we're so, so busy doing things that we never take time to connect with the mind. Then, when we go to a more advanced stage of medica meditation, where are we bringing it to? Uh, in my guided tour, I took you to a forest, which was a nice place, a peaceful place. So I took you, in this world, according to the Bhagavad Gita, there are places in goodness, places in passion, places in ignorance. Now what would Oxford Street be? What do you, what do you think, Danny? Uh, Oxford, huh? Oxford Street? Yeah, just around the corner. What do you think? Is it goodness, passion or ignorance? I'm not probably, but I think it's just here. People. The street is right there. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you go out the door left, and here it is, the shopping street. Mm -hmm. Is it in goodness, passion, or ignorance? When you walk there, you see all these people shopping and running around, and cars and taxis, and you know, and, you know, and someone is walking in the, in the side, and then you set a foot on the side of the road, just on the sidewalk. Oh, cool! Right, you pull your foot back, red light, you know, stop. Is it goodness? Is it passion? Or is it ignorance? Ignorance. My mother would say goodness. Huh? <laughs> my mother would say goodness. Your mother would say, <laughs> my, my mother would say, my goodness. <laughs> <You know. laughs> in this world, there are places that are in goodness. They make us peaceful. They are nourishing us. In this world, there are places in passion. They agitate us. They move us. They bring about, like, uh, they awaken fire. They, they awaken lust. They awaken desires. They are driving us. And there are places in ignorance. They zonk us out. You know, you go in some dark place. I mean, just actually, before this, um, I had a tape recorder which was recording lectures, right? And which I post on the internet. And then they broke, and then I thought, this time I'm just gonna get a microphone for my phone. I just bought it, and I got it here. So we went into the shop, and it was like, there were noises in the shop, there were lights flashing in the shop, and as you're in this shop, after a little while, my mind was going like on ozone. Mm. 
<laughs> Different than the candles here. Right? See, if we, instead of the candles, would have like some intense lights here, you know, like behind me, like. <laughs> <laughs> you see the qualities goodness, passion because there's food in goodness it's sustaining, nourishing, healthy food and passion flames shoot from the mouth that's sort of like that kind of food and there's food and ignorance it's been three days in the fridge and it's, but it still didn't walk away <laughs> yeah, it will go for another day if you put enough salt <laughs> Goodness, passion, and ignorance we can recognize in the world. So, Danny, when we meditate on goodness, it will lift us up. It will bring us, it will make our mind peaceful. It will make us more tolerant. It will make us more philosophical. It will, if we, if you meditate in ignorance, I am old, you know. I'm so old that I was part of the 60s. I was just old enough in the 60s to do it all, if you know what I mean. So we, and I'm from Amsterdam. So I was in this place called the uh, Electric Center. And I was lying on a carpet and they had tropical birds flying around in the room. <laughs> and Pink Floyd was blasting out the speakers and everyone had taken certain substances. It was... I don't know what it was, actually. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But I don't think it was goodness. Whatever it was, I don't think it was goodness. Although these birds were pretty good. <laughs> anyway, there's a tropical birds flying around the room. Um, so ignorance, passion, goodness, we can recognize. So if you meditate and bring in more goodness in the, in the meditation, by associating <coughs> with goodness, just here, the little, the little lights. It brings some nice energy. Mm. Yeah. It just brings, brings a nice energy into the room. A little waterfall. Yeah? Just a little, a natural little waterfall. The sound of a waterfall. Makes you peaceful. Like that, goodness is nourishing us. Gives us good energy. You know, Sometimes you gotta get out of the stinking city, yeah? I mean, trucking down the streets of London, you sometimes you just gotta get out of this stinking city and be somewhere in a forest, you know? Some, you know, some green, you know? Like, some real air. Ah, you breathe and you feel the goodness in your lungs. So, same for the mind. Goodness brings peace to you. Like, therefore, meditation is not only about connecting with the mind, but it's also about directing it towards goodness. Then there's a step up towards bhakti, where you are giving, yeah, and with, where it's about love and devotion. That when you start meditating on love and devotion, uh, that, oh, Mr. Danny. That's very nice. Because then we go beyond ourselves. As long as, as long as I meditate on myself, me and my meditation, yeah. Yeah. selfie. Yeah. Yeah. I am meditating. Selfie, post on Facebook. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. Uh, 
that's still selfish. But if, but if you start to meditate on the welfare of others and on acting, on becoming devotion personified, that's the best. Okay, it was a long answer. I'm sorry about that. That was a tough question. Understood. Actually. You're asking big questions. Yes, please. But, um, I'm actually interested, you said, like, uh, uh, as loud as you can. You actually used a few times the word, the word uh, control. Control. Like controlling the mind, controlling the senses. Yeah. And I also know that I was reading a lot of times that, like, one of the spiritual practices is not controlling, but allowing things to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't really understand how you mean that. Yeah, well. Okay, we can allow things to happen, but maybe in preliminary stages, in preliminary stages, we are in the dualities. We have, we have kindness and we have hate also. Yeah? And of course, you know, no one likes to talk about their hate is all, but we, we have it, like, uh, so, we have a higher self and a lower self. There's a part of me which I control because this part is ugly, it, because this part causes suffering to others. But I have it, it's not gone yet. Sometimes I turn green with envy. <laughs> what to do about that? So that I, those things I need to control. When I, talking about lust, now, all right, there's, there's sex in this world, isn't it? And that's, uh, sex has always been a little complicated yeah, between people because um, apparently, apparently, there are different ways that one can relate to it. One way is where it involves loving emotions towards a person, where one becomes a well-wisher of the person, and then the whole thing winds up in a, in a sexual exchange. Or another one is where there's no love, there's only lust, and I just, if, if I'm looking at the lust object, I just see the, uh, the body the flesh. I don't care about the person at all. I just care about the body, about the form in the flesh, and I want that. And the person inside, can, I couldn't care less what happens to that person. So now it is gross lust. Lust in its ugly feature, you know? Lust in its destructive feature. That's the lust of the rapist. That's the lust even of one who kills. <coughs> That's the ugly, ugly lust. Right? So, are we free from ugly lust? Are we free from envy? From ugly envy, from hate of others? Huh? Of trying to put others down? Are we free? So because we are not free from a lower self, at this stage, some control is needed. Otherwise, we will cause suffering. Huh? I can just let go and follow it all. But I might become a monster. You know, I, when I was a kid, I'm from a family where everyone is extremely polite. You know, little kisses in the air, and, you know, <laughs> and shaking, you know, all that stuff, right? And when I was a kid, I didn't like it. I thought it was sheer hypocrisy. You know? 
But now I understand that if he wouldn't have had that, what would we not have said to each other? You know, hey, hey you with your ugly nose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kids sometimes do these things, right? They, they say these really in public, they say these totally embarrassing things, and everyone, shh. <laughs> 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 uh, so, what do we do with our lower nature? So, that's the problem if we just accept everything. Therefore, Patanjali therefore says we must control our lower nature. Then, when we become once that control is there, then the next stage is this where we are purified. Then we can go for that, what you're talking about, you know, of actually acceptance and, 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 uh, and, and go with the natural uh, feelings and tendencies. What, you agree with that? control things and yeah. not like for example if when I see that I'm um, when I see an emotion coming towards me like mm -hmm. if I'm starting to feel annoyed or stressed or something um, is this something I can control and I should try to control it or is something that is out of my control and I should just you know uh, try to observe it and let it go and like you know how to manage mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. and emotions mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we all have uh, all kinds of emotions, <coughs> and when we uh, start to forcefully repress our emotions, right, that's not a good thing, right? at least that could create a lot of pressure, so sometimes you have to just also accept and let go, um, as we find in, in psychology, so that is there. Um, but what is recommended in, uh, in bhakti yoga is to be thoughtful, is to cultivate thoughtfulness as, as part of the path of devotion, of bhakti. To be thoughtful in our actions, not to just do everything impulsive, but to also look as to what is the long-term result of this? If I let this go, what, what is the long-term result of this? Mm -hmm. Not just let it go for the here and now because I feel this feeling is really coming up and I really feel it and I feel like going along with it. Okay, but if we train ourselves to think, to be thoughtful, where does, what is the long-term result of this? Um, in that way, we would live a, a constructive life. I spoke about goodness, passion, and ignorance, and that way will come, we can put values of goodness in our life. Because goodness is a, and passion and ignorance is around us, but also inside of us, isn't it? It's also in us. And as I said, we have good and bad sides in us. And there are parts of my personality I will, I have weaknesses in my nature that I need to conquer. Yeah? I have some things in my nature you know, that I know are not beneficial. And if I, let, if I go into these things, like, like uh, astrologically, I have a fire sign. You know? I have fire. When I sing, I, I sing also very fiery. Yeah, I mean, it rocks, you can see it on YouTube, I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> but, I'm fiery. Yeah? So, 
that fire works for me, but also against me. Sometimes I burn, I literally burn people out with my energy. I'm just too pushy, too energetic, you know, I don't know. Hey, put your foot on the brake, right? Don't do this, this person cannot handle all that energy of yours. You know, slow down, right? Let them go at their own pace. So I have to, so I have to be more thoughtful about my nature and, and how it interacts and can't just uh, let it all go spontaneous. Therefore, we recommend thoughtfulness. And, and, and that can be strengthened by knowledge. Like then you have a text like the Bhagavad Gita, which analyzes all these states of consciousness and gives you a, a spiritual path. So that helps to, that knowledge helps to, to be thoughtful and to recognize patterns and so on. Yeah. I, I was thinking of what you said about um, the nature, and then when we have an experience, rather than take it as a negative one because it's against us, yeah. but we need to take it as a learning process okay. and, and see how we can, I suppose, control the fire or the maybe become more patient or rather yeah. than getting very annoyed, so what, what the lady is saying, because yeah. it didn't go, well, I mean, what, what, what's your view on this, like? Um, I think everyone needs values in life. You need a sense of right and wrong, right? You know, that's human. Right? Yeah. Animal means basically instincts, basically impulses, whatever sort of, but human being means we, we, we have a sense of right and wrong. And everyone for himself, you have to have values, isn't it? So first of all that, that would be a framework of values. And then I'm proposing values at the beginning of the talk, I propose values where we are not looking only at our own happiness, but also at the happiness, include the happiness of someone else. I put that above someone who just looks for his own happiness. So then, okay, then it already gets like uh, more complicated. Right? If now, if I have the happiness of the whole community in mind, okay, then sometimes I have to sacrifice something of myself for the good of the community. Sometimes I may need to uh, express something of my own for the community. So, again, this thoughtfulness is, is, is needed because without values, where is human existence? Okay, where do you get your values? Right? Do you get your values on your own or do you get them from your mother? Do you get them from... But then, when I came to puberty, then I kind of came to the understanding that a lot that I've learned from my parents that uh, to sort of reorient myself and investigate all these things so then I adjusted all these values something stayed something went <coughs> then I start to look around in different books of wisdom you know, philosophers ancient books of wisdom and uh, because ultimately where do we get our values from a psychology book, from a philosophy book, from a, a little bit from here and there and from everywhere. Cocktail. Um, anyway, happiness is the goal in life. And we're looking at happiness that if we could include the happiness of all in our vision and in our actions, then we would have a better world. Because if everyone goes for his own happiness, then what are we getting? A world where everyone lives at the expense of someone? Well, we see too much of that. You know? Make America great again. Yeah? You know? uh, okay, but what about us? I'm not American. I mean, well, I mean, too bad, you know? 
own passport. You know, that's a good guy. Um, so could we be a bit more inclusive, maybe? Right? Could we maybe have a vision more inclusive than just, you know, only people with green T-shirts today? Right? They're the good ones. Everyone else is out. Okay, you're in. You're in. You're in. So Louis is not out. Okay, you're okay. Someone in the back is green. I'm sorry, I, I just, <laughs> uh, green leaves. No, that's not, it doesn't do it. It's got to be a t-shirt. I'm out. No, oh, what? Well, everyone's in. No. Yeah. Well, that's exalted consciousness. So how to be yourself and how to bring something positive to, to the world as a whole. That's, that's spiritual knowledge. Uh, that's yoga, that's bhakti yoga, and that we find explained actually in the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, in that way, in that way, we can really uh, benefit and make good decisions. Anyway, that's what I think. Yeah. And how do you, uh, what's your advice on uh, having a better relationship with yourself without uh, being too self-obsessed? How to have a better relationship with yourself without being too self-absorbed and uh, and cut off from others. Yeah, I think we should. Sometimes we need to take some t step back from others, take some time for ourselves to reflect. But otherwise, we are uh, also cannot just be self-centered. <coughs> we are not alone, right? We are... We are a family. We are one world and we're all together. And if we... And this artificial attitude that we're all strangers, you know, that's a weird... That's actually a weird social imposition. We're all strangers. So I just walk past you as if you're not there. Because you're a stranger. I, I don't know you. I was walk straight past you. And it's weird. Actually. Yeah. And, you know. So we gotta get rid of this artificial distances that we've created. So we say, no, 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 no. We're all together. But because we have a world which is full of vice, where a world where degradation is set in. We have a culture where we're all strangers because in that way you get some protection. Yeah? And then only people that you know and that are sure and safe and so on, then they're in. And everyone else, strangers, don't know them. So it means there is a defect in the world. If the world is healthy and everyone is 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 open, available, then we can have very open relationships. But because we live in a world where there's a lot of confusion and a lot of strange negativity, therefore we need protection, therefore we need to withdraw, therefore we need to sort of create barriers, therefore there are strangers, and we're living on our own little safe island, and go off and build bridges to people that we know who also live on little islands. Um, but that's not satisfying. It's not meant to be. We're meant to rise above that and have real relationship of trust. But how to do that unless you have a spiritual foundation? Yeah. You know, then you have to, to really try to elevate yourself and come to a higher consciousness you know, and to see how everything is connected. Then God consciousness comes in the picture. You know. Then you can maybe get to such a level if you if you really cultivate your consciousness. So that's what I would advise. Cultivate spiritual consciousness. And 
we do that with mantra chanting. That's our technique. And by reading Bhagavad Gita, trying to be thoughtful in our actions. And try to be kind. Okay, he brought some things here that look very tasty. And some is yet to come. And yet there is more coming. It already looks impressive. You know, uh, recently we have had a lot of climate change and stuff. Climate change, my God. And then uh, in, in Ashtanga, like there's Asana, Pranayama, Niyama, and all this stuff. And then we have yoga up there. So where does uh, nature sit in this, like, this Kapi Yoga? Or like, where? Nature. Like nature is, we are part of nature, yeah. you know? The funny thing with modern men is that they see themselves separate from nature. With our technology and everything, we became we separated ourselves from nature, and that's the problem. We are part of nature, so bhakti yoga is the path of of devotion. Naturally, also has that relationship to nature. Nature is sacred. No? Nature must be treated like sacred. Not nature is something you use and disposable, and that's just. Mow down, mow down a forest, you know, or like uh, dump more junk in the ocean and so on. <coughs> Obviously, uh, so therefore, bhakti will ultimately go back to a more natural lifestyle. And I think everybody in the room and everybody in the street agrees it can't go on like this. You know, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. Some change has to has to come now. Mm -hmm. It can't go on like this. So okay, we'll have to go back to a more natural way. We're gonna have five G. Do you know what that means? They're gonna put yeah. like more towers everywhere, like they get a whole city everywhere. They have to fill it up with thousands of more towers per square mile. Each square mile, we'll have to have thousand more towers sending, sending waves. You know what it's gonna do? It's <laughs> gonna go through your head and through your whole body. You're gonna, we're gonna get cooked. I mean, the whole world's gonna turn into like a big microwave oven. I was uh, wondering, what can we do about it? I mean. I don't know. <laughs> I think if you go to countryside, we'll just probably have a mobile phone and then again we'll need internet and then yeah. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also don't know. <laughs> but the BBC says that in a few years the internet will become so jammed that it will not move anymore. Like uh, traffic jams on the internet. Complete traffic jams. Maybe it's a good thing. Yeah, and then, you know, and then they'll restrict it, then only government can use it. I read my article about it. No strings attached. It's just, just about uh, uh, focus the mind and let that act. Don't read anything into it, just let it act. Krishna is the supreme good. He'll bring goodness, chant his name. Rice, so many good things will come. So there's a distinction between meditation and prayer. Although they're very close. Uh, it can be the um, meditation um, and phase of pray at the same time or to reach some um, s uh, some level to open uh, enough that a channel to get some uh, power to pray for someone or yeah. meditate is some, sometimes uh, give you a level to open 
and uh, be aware from uh, yes. everything you want to disturb uh, yeah. yourself to connect with uh, God or, or and uh, <coughs> I pray for everyone. Mm -hmm. and sometimes a uh, combination of, of uh, prayer and meditation it gives you the way to have enough energy mm -hmm. to uh, abras everyone. So it can be a combination, no? Yeah. Uh, that combination. Yeah, yeah, it can be. Can be. To dedicate yeah. it for uh, something, uh, specific things. Yeah. Very much so. And in Bhakti, you find also these elements, you know what I mean? You find, we also have prayers. And we also have a meditation. We, we do combine these things. Everything is here. Yeah, everything's here. So thank you so much, Kadamba Khan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, we're now ready to step into our last meditation for tonight, which is taking some uh, sacred food cooked with devotion. So we have some vegan preparations. And hopefully Maharaj can spend with us a few more uh, minutes or He's going to take prasadam with us um, and feel free to approach him and ask a few more questions on your um, personal questions if you want. So um, let the party begin. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.